Hey, it's Mike here, and today meat has made its way onto the list of top 10 allergies in the US for the first time, according to CDC researchers. Insert vegan celebration here. I'm just kidding. So how does this happen? I briefly touched on this in the past, so some of you already know that tick bites can cause this meat allergy. However, there is so much more research that has come out on this. I've learned a ton looking into this again after the CDC's report, looking at just how widespread this is. We're gonna learn about the particular ticks that are at risk in addition to that Lone Star tick, which is most popular here, what areas of the world, what types of people are most at risk and the biggest issue here, which I have not covered in the past, really, which is the heart disease issue here. There's a major connection with newer research on that, so let's just go. So since my last video, this has now been deemed alpha gal syndrome, not to be confused with that one chick at your gym that could crush you with her thighs. <laughs> no, this is alpha galactose, which is a sugar that is in the saliva of certain types of ticks. Again, that Lone Star tick, and in case you're curious, here here is a map of the range of the Lone Star Tick in the US, because it still really is the main threat. However, it's not the Lone Star of the show here. Again, we'll get into a bunch of other ticks that can do it, like the Black-Legged Tick. Your body then creates antibodies because it recognizes that sugar as a foreign substance, but in certain people, that immune response can be more dramatic. Of this Virginia study sample, 15% of total people tested positive for antibodies, but only 2% said that they had a meat allergy. This is really interesting because it could mean that a lot of people aren't aware that they have some type of response here. They're just confused. But a lot of that likely is people just not having enough of an immune response to cause a reaction. However, we'll talk about that heart risk later on for those people. And another factor is just medical people, healthcare professionals not knowing about this again, which we'll get to. But what are the symptoms of this allergy? Two to six hours after eating meat, one might experience hives or itchy rash, nausea or vomiting, heartburn or indigestion, diarrhea, various cough, shortness of breath, breathing issues, drop in blood pressure, swelling of various facial areas and throat, and dizziness or faintness. Of course, you can have your standard allergy treatments like EpiPens and other things like that, but from the CDC in terms of the actual allergy itself, quote, no treatment or cure is currently available. So the question becomes, where are people actually getting alpha-galactose from? Well, it is in non-human mammals. And so, you know, cannibals, they're off the hook. But from the CDC, meat and dairy contain alpha-gal. We're talking beef, pork, lamb, venison, rabbit can all contain high amounts of alpha-gal. And you heard that right. It's not just a meat allergy. Dairy contains the sugar as well. As the CDC also says, it's found in products derived from mammals, including including milk and other dairy products and some pharmaceutical products. CNN actually highlighted a particular case where this dude who believes he was bit in 2018 actually died in the hospital in 2021 after being given heparin, which is like an anticoagulant, anti-clot drug that is pig derived. Lucky for him, you know, seven minutes later, he was revived. It's also worth mentioning that collagen has it. So, you know, various foods with gelatin and collagen products are an issue. Also, people that might be getting like a pig heart valve, that is also an issue. And now to that main CDC report, which made headlines a couple months ago, they looked not just at the estimated amount of people that have this, but also the healthcare expertise that exists and those results were particularly stunning. Yeah, 42% of nurses and doctors said that they had not heard of the allergy. Oh my gosh, and also one of the researchers from the CDC paper, Dr. Scott Commons said, quote, the number of potential cases is far beyond what we thought. Yeah, they estimated between 96,000 and 450,000 persons in the United States may have been affected by it. And I will say 90,000 is the actual number of positive tests that they've gotten, which has been like a one third positivity rate for the test that they've sent out. So this is definitely more than 90,000, especially when you consider how few people actually know about it back to Commons, quote, 
If the projection and estimate of nearly 450,000 cases is even approximately correct, this is the number 10 allergy in the country behind sesame, believe it or not, which is number nine and affects roughly half a million people. And yeah, that would suck being allergic to sesame because that would mean that you can't have hummus. And here's the FDA's list of adult allergies from most to least with, you know, milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, blah, blah, blah. And it's crazy how four of those top allergens are all animal products. And I thought it'd be nice to get a bar chart on this to just see how these compare. And I regret to say that a random barbecue site has the most clear depiction of that. Uh, yeah. So you can see that right after sesame, you'd, you'd have meat. And on this topic of you know killing animals for meat and then having a reaction, karma comes up a lot. And I can't help but think that there might really be some karma involved here because this study looked at who is most at risk here. And one of the groups they found was hunters. And I have heard a lot of vegans joke like, ha ha ha, you've got what you deserved, etc." But it is worth mentioning that, you know, quite a few children are also having responses to this. They're just fed meat, don't really know what's going on. But thankfully it's less frequent in children. You know, they generally have GI symptoms, but it is worth noting something unique from the literature here is that this is an allergy that can just present GI symptoms, which is apparently unusual for allergies. And part of the reason a lot of people would miss it. Someone might just think they have like IBS or something. It's like, no, you've got a meat allergy. But this is where it goes further than I originally thought. And that is the heart disease risk, which is really serious here. Yeah, the meat allergy itself above and beyond the effects of normal animal fat might be fueling heart disease from the NIH, a study looking at people with alpha-gal antibodies versus those who didn't. The alpha-galers had 30% more plaque in their arteries, which was also less stable, which is really bad for heart attacks and stroke. And from this study that looked at over a thousand people, the alpha-gal sensitization rate, you know, people who had those antibodies was almost 13 fold higher in patients who had a heart attack compared with matched healthy controls. Now what's actually going on here? It seems to be a one, two punch situation. First of all, you just have the inflammation and various inflammation compounds that can come with having an allergy. From that study we just looked at, those inflammatory compounds can actually increase the permeability of your artery wall and of course lead to more plaque buildup. But another might be the lipid connection itself. A pretty recent study found that you know, alpha gals only getting into your bloodstream if it's being transported with fat, protein doesn't do it. The researchers also mention that alpha-gal activates not just our IgE or fast-acting antibodies, but our IgG, which are long-term or chronic antibodies that form over a few weeks and last longer. Researchers say this in combination with alpha-gal entering with chylomicrons, which are literally dietary cholesterol, could explain the alpha-gal increased plaque issue. Yeah, from this diagram from another study, you can see that alpha-gal is just being transported through all sorts of cholesterol through your body till LDL itself, which is causal to atherosclerosis, is transporting it. So you can just imagine what would happen if you have an allergic reaction to some LDL, especially permeating into your artery, leading to even more inflammation and more plaque buildup, you know, a bad situation. In other words, this creates super LDL, super bad cholesterol. Though this seriously needs more research, and I will say that this is definitely the most dangerous aspect of alpha-gal, short of people having like straight up anaphylactic reactions because heart disease is our leading killer, and if this can accelerate that, even if from that previous study, only one in seven people know that they have a meat allergy or having some type of direct response there, they could still be having some increased arterial inflammation response that is accelerating atherosclerosis and not even know about it. So in this sense, eating meat, the animal fat itself is driving atherosclerosis as it normally does. But then in addition to that, you have the immune response that is connected to a sugar that is carried by animal fat. So yeah, not looking good. It's almost like we, we shouldn't be eating meat anyway. Let's move on. <laughs> you know, I have to say stuff like that. Let's move on to other ticks as well as other places in the world that I believe are going to be more of a risk as time goes on. We have the European castor bean tick, which has you know quite a large range as you can see from this map. And then in Australia, the paralysis tick 
is the one at risk here from it having alpha gal and its saliva as well. And uh, yeah, everything seems to be more poisonous and scary in Australia. This is also happening in South Africa. They have yet to nail down the exact tick, but it could be the South African Bont tick. We also have the Asian longhorned tick, which from this map you can see covers a lot of places, Australia as well, Japan, South Korea, and some in China, as well as just the red area is potentially habitable. So that range is huge. And just looking at China, I had to wonder, you know, is this an issue in China? And I looked around and I couldn't really find studies on it in particular, but looking to this map, certain areas of China have like 20 to 30 species of ticks. So some of that, probably the Asian longhorn tick that we just looked at. So I had to wonder, you know, is this showing up in any literature yet? There is a 2021 meta-analysis here from China that looked at food allergies and found that of those with food allergies, 5% were allergic to meat, which, you know, puts it at over 5 million Chinese people. But was that, previous meat allergies, classic ones like the primary beef allergy, which is actually an allergy to bovine serum. Well, looking to the study with the highest meat allergy that they looked at, it was actually in urban people. So you know, not likely tick derived, but maybe some. But yeah, with 1.4 billion people and you know various ticks, depending on where you are, I think China is a big risk for this moving to the future. And speaking of the future, and even right now, we have to touch on why this is becoming more and more of an issue now. And that's because it's driven by climate climate change. As the planet heats up, we have the shifting of, you know, warmer growing zones going up north, especially here in the United States. And this study, generally looking at ticks, emphasizes that really well. Here is the previous and current sort of heat range zones, and you can just see them sliding right up north. That means more habitability for ticks. That also means a longer tick season, more potential exposure for people. And yeah, this study on the Lone Star Tick in particular, you can see from this map, we have that original line of its habitat just expanded, boom, straight past it today. The study concludes that shifts in habitat and climate are expected to further bolster the ecological success of the Lone Star Tick northward and westward, onward and upward, at least someone's benefiting from climate change. But this is once again ironic because eating animals and their products and fueling animal agriculture is a major driver of climate change. That climate change then expands the tick zones and then leads to more people having a reaction to eating that meat that is fueling climate change. It's almost like nature is trying to tell us something. So to that recent Oxford study, a vegan diet doesn't just lower your emissions and species extinction driving force by 75%. It also lowers your chance of having an allergic reaction to meat because you're not eating it. In the end, this allergic reaction does go away if you stop eating meat. If you're somebody even who isn't having the allergic reaction, you know, the longer you go without being exposed to alpha galactose in meat, the less of an immune response you would have in terms of that dangerous heart disease cascade that we see. But you know what doesn't go away? Uh, being killed for meat, just saying it. But yeah, this is a massively growing issue. People need to know that meat is now a top 10 allergy and act appropriately because heart disease is our number one killer. We also need to be eating less of these animals for the planet. And I also believe for people's health, even if they're not allergic to it. And this really is growing rapidly. We've seen a 40% increase in cases from 2017 to 2021, and that's expected to go up. I believe across the world, this is gonna be happening more and more with different ticks that have alpha gal in their saliva. So we need to know about this. So feel free to let me know down below what you think about this. If you know anybody that has had this, what their experience is, I'd be really curious. And of course, feel free to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.